Bill Gates III. Bill Gates was born in 1955 in Seattle, Washington, into a family of affluence and power. His father, William Gates II, measuring six feet seven inches tall, was an attorney who co-founded Preston Gates and Ellis, a law firm that had offices across the United States and China. As a man highly involved in politics, William Gates holds quite a laundry list of accolades. As he sat on the board of eugenicist Margaret Sanger's Planned Parenthood before the era of Roe versus Wade. Not only that, but he was also the face of a state income tax initiative in Washington state. After his late wife passed, William Sr. married Mimi Gardner, longtime friend of Teresa Hines Carey. Mimi is fluent in Chinese and served as former director of Asian art at the Yale University Art Gallery. But let's get back to the late Mama Gates. Because in addition to popping out Bill Gates, she also had two daughters, Christy and Libby. And Mama Gates, who also is known as Mary Maxwell, started off as a humble school teacher and eventually became chairwoman of United Way. She came from a long line of money and power, as her father was a wealthy banker and her grandfather served as president of the National City Bank in Seattle and was the director of the Seattle branch of the Federal Reserve Bank. Side note, how come when you travel down the rabbit hole on virtually any topic, the same creatures are always festering down at the bottom? With a bloodline like this, it seems like, for Bill, the path ahead was clear. In all of his biographies, there's an emphasis on Bill's intellect that manifested early on in childhood. He was smarter than the other children. He was different. He was destined for success. Bill grew up attending the University Congregational Church which now describes itself as a progressive Protestant church committed to social justice in an institution that celebrates diversity in religious background, sexual orientation, race, and abilities. Though it seems like the impact of a Christian doctrine was lackluster in Bill's childhood. As he would later go on to say, I don't have any evidence of that when asked by a Time Magazine's reporter about the divinity of the human soul, specifically if the human soul was special. When Bill was of age, he was accepted into Seattle's most exclusive and prestigious Lakeside School, where he bragged to his teachers that he'd be a millionaire by age 30. Lakeside was able to collect enough funds through donations to purchase something only big companies could afford in the 60s, a computer. The story goes like this. Bill taught himself to code by reading the computer handbook, or in other words, was able to get the computer to perform tasks he wanted to execute. And he and his buddy, Paul Allen, formed a club called the Lakeside Programmers. And hold up, Paul Allen is two years older than Bill? But Paul's over here looking like he's 40, while Bill Bill looks like the perfect target for a game of dodgeball. Anyway, somehow the Lakeside Programmers, composed of minors went on to make business deals with computer corporations during that time, getting paid to find bugs in the software and write computer programs. Bill is credited with making one of the first computer viruses during this time. Maybe this was where he learned that by creating the computer virus, he could profit from its removal. Bill took the SAT twice so he could get the perfect score, and he came close at 1590 out of 1600 and was eagerly accepted at Harvard where he attended college but would never graduate because his vision of having a personal computer on every office desk and in every home took precedence and his company, Microsoft, took off with the help of his old high school buddy, Paul Allen. In 1980, Microsoft and IBM struck a deal and the rest was history. Six years later, Microsoft was launched on the stock exchange and Bill and his best buddy, Paul, became instant millionaires. Though, before his death in 2018, Paul Allen wrote in his memoirs that Bill was a bully who tried to cut Paul's share in the company as Paul was recovering from cancer. In 1994, Bill married Melinda French, a marketing manager at Microsoft and daughter of an aerospace engineer from Dallas, Texas. Which really makes my Operation Paperclip senses tingle. I I don't know about you. Today, Bill Gates has a net worth of $98.9 billion, is heavily involved in politics, and is known worldwide as a philanthropist. Having established the Gates Foundation in 2000 with his wife, his father, and Warren Buffett, the foundation has become the largest private foundation in the world, holding around $50 billion in assets, with its stated goals claiming that from poverty to health, 
to education to improve the quality of life for billions of people. And for decades, the Gates Foundation has given free vaccinations to people in the third world, while Bill has become more and more politically outspoken, lining the pockets of our elected officials with Federal Reserve notes. Which is really rich because Bill started a movement for billionaires to give away most of their wealth in philanthropic endeavors. Bill is one of the richest people in the world because of the wealth he gained from Microsoft stock. And the stock price appreciation is not taxable until the shares are sold. So he held on to these things for decades, which delayed paying capital gains tax. And to avoid this even further, he donated these shares to the Gates Foundation. So our benevolent and altruistic billionaire over here successfully worked the tax loophole of charitable organizations to enhance his own wealth. If what they say is true and money is power, Bill Gates is one of the most powerful people in the world. People either think Bill's whole philanthropy with the Gates Foundation is a benefit to mankind, and a success story is an inspiration to many young entrepreneurs. Or people are like me and would run as fast as you could if you saw Bill or Melinda roll up to your neighborhood. For the former group, I want you to know that I was you. And I believe the same things once. Because mainstream media runs so many feel-good pieces on the foundation's work. They've successfully framed Bill Gates' life as the tale of the underdog, even though he, he came from wealth and influence. And to question any of that results in shame from the loudest of voices. So I get it. But the truth is, there's a difference between the treatment and care of someone's physical well-being and the pharmaceutical industry. Big Oil has been Big Pharma since 1874. It all started with the Rockefellers and Standard Oil. And remember, it was Devil Bill who sired oil tycoon John D. who built Standard Oil. And eventually the Rockefeller Foundation, the philanthropic organization that has shaped and funded many aspects of modern medicine. In every official Rockefeller biography, they go on record saying that Devil Bill was known as a bigamist, con artist, and most notably, a snake oil salesman. The life and charitable work of Bill Gates is nothing new. Bill Gates represents the continuum of Rockefeller medicine, or the continuum of their long-established formula of problem-reaction-solution. But exchange big oil for big tech, and now we've arrived in the present. Do you ever remember electing Bill Gates so that he could influence your daily life in the legislation of your country? Hmm, neither do I. Do you recall at any point in this video me saying that Bill Gates attended any form of medical school or training in the medical field? Hmm, neither do I. So let me give you an interesting timeline of recent events. In 2013, Bill flew on the Lolita Express with our favorite notorious Mossad blackmailer who didn't kill himself, Jeffrey Epstein. Through this connection, Bill Gates made donations personally directed by Epstein. In 2014, a man was arrested at Bill's estate for possessing 60,000 photos of children. But apparently this dude got the DuPont Air treatment with a mere slap on the wrist, being ordered to stay away from children. In 2015, in a TED Talk, Bill demonstrated more of his Nostradamus-like ability as he did when he was a child. You remember when he told all his teachers he'd be a millionaire by age 30? In this talk, he warned a coronavirus-like threat and predicted to the audience that he would be the savior of this future pandemic. Fast forward to 2018, when Bill ran a pandemic virus simulation which he projected would kill 33 million people if the simulation came to fruition. One year later, in October of 2019, the Gates Foundation hosted Event 201 at the World Economic Forum in New York, which was a high-level pandemic exercise that played out a novel coronavirus pandemic with potentially catastrophic consequences, requiring cooperation between industries, governments, and key institutions. Johnson & Johnson was in attendance. As Event 201 was happening, the 2019 Military World Games were taking place hosting 110 nations and thousands of military members from around the world and none other than Ground Zero, Wuhan, China. Yes, you heard that right. The World Military Games were held in Wuhan, China, Ground Zero of the coronavirus, mere weeks before the first case was reported. 